Hello Intelligent Automation community. Uh, it has been a hectic couple of weeks moving from Blue Prism to Reveal Group, and in that time, we've already announced a partnership with RPA Supervisor. Um, now, as you can probably tell from the title, that's not the topic for today, but if you're interested in RPA Supervisor on September 4th, 15th, I'll be live chatting with Ben Lingard from Reveal Group, Eric Lean from RPA Supervisor, and Kim Meredith from Cisco. Not sure why that always happens. No, not that Cisco. I'm talking about Cisco, the $50 billion food product company. And uh, so check out the video description in the link to register for that Reveal Group, RPA Supervisor, and Cisco webinar. Now, today I am joined by Scott Teeple, who swears that he's in his basement and not live streaming from a Pier 1 import store, but I'll let you be the judge. Um, Scott and his group of heavy hitters that you probably have heard of before include Lee Coulter, AJ Hanna, Kent Andrews, Chandra Bathory, and I'm apologizing because there's a long list of, of characters in there, but they were all responsible for building out Ascension Health's award-winning shared services center operations. In addition to Ascension being a fairly early blueprint for how to build a successful US-based shared services center, uh, Scott and team were also Blue Prism's first US customer. Now, that also means that Scott was my first customer at Blue Prism, and I still probably blame him for about 6.3% of my bad habits. In fact, as we were planning for this, and I was pacing around the house as usual on, on speakerphone, Andrea overheard the conversation and reminded me that Scott and I were on the phone while I was at the hospital planning a training session about an hour after Addie was born. Over the past six years, Scott's team expanded their internal, in-house intelligent automation capabilities. Building on that internal capability, about a year in, Scott also turned to what became the creation of Agilify Automation. Now, Agilify served as a subsidiary to deliver intelligent automation services to companies outside of the Ascension brand. This unique alignment resulted in the ability to blend teams with both in-house direct experience and external delivery experience. I asked Scott to join today to share his experience on both sides of that equation because I think that's fairly unique to the market. So uh, without further delay, uh, let's figure out if I can pull Scott in here and get his recording working because he's also throwing me a curveball with a little vertical orientation here. So um, let's get that recording pulled in here. Did it work? Yep. And here we go. Hey, Scott. Uh, so I'm still not convinced that you're uh, anywhere other than a IKEA showroom that's just roped off right now. <laughs> um, so your team had to figure out how to deploy all this RPA stuff before there were just mountains of free advice that was free flowing around YouTube like this video we're creating right now. Hopefully our track record makes this worth viewing. But <laughs> as one of the earliest adopters of RPA in North America, what did you learn building out your internal delivery capabilities. Maybe you can share that with everybody on here. You know, Josh, it's, it's very interesting as I really reflect back uh, over the last six years uh, and, and what it really took uh, to really stand up and to run uh, the center of excellence. Um, it, I, I don't know, the, you know, the, there's so many talking points that, you know, I've had videos on, you know, the stall points and, and really, you know, diving into all the different nuances between the tools uh, the technologies, um, the the process, you know, discovery processes, and, and you know what it takes with IT and, and all these other things. Um, but I really think the one thing that stands out as you really look at running a practice and, and an automation center of excellence, it, it really is centered around the people and the importance of of the impacts that it's making on the people themselves. You know, they they do this process, you know, every day. Um, they do it better than anybody because they're the ones who, who are doing it. 
Um, and sometimes, you know, when, when you sit down and you have the conversations with them, it really just becomes about the process itself. You're really focused on just doing the automation and trying to get it into production and doing it the best way that you can. But really at the end of the day, you know, you can't lose focus for why you're doing it. And the reason is, is the people. You know, we're really doing it to enhance and to change and make them more effective and make them more efficient and give them a better quality of job, right? And at the end of the day, um, they don't have to do that, you know, the tedious stuff anymore. Um, they have the automation that really helps and augments and, and changes the way that you're doing it. And if we just take the business process, when we go off and we, and we do this without them, uh, and not coming back to them uh, and really doing it um, the, the way that they need it to be done, uh, then I think we've lost sight. And, and then we're going to be stuck in this ever changing cycle of, well, it isn't doing it the way that I wanted it to. You know, you've always seen um, that uh, that meme on the internet, you know, where you get the business process and then it goes through some very iterations of SL SLDC. And at the end of the day, it doesn't even look like the thing that they even asked for. You know, it's, it's a funny ha ha ha, but it happens all the time. And I think it's when we lose focus to what we're really doing this for, and that's the customer themselves, right? Or the, the, the business user um, that's, that's needing that work done. Uh, and making sure that we're doing the check-ins and we're doing the, the touch bases and making sure that, hey, this, this process is truly being automated the way that they need it, not just the way that it's really easy for a developer to do. So, Scott, I, I think on the meme bit, you just described half of Ralph Diaz's daily LinkedIn posts. And I'll pause for a second, but um, uh, Ralph, uh, I'm a little late to the party, but as an aside, congratulations on the new role at HFS. I hope you keep up the awesome posts on a day-to-day -day basis. It brings an awesome kind of goofiness and lets us laugh at ourselves a bit in the intelligent automation community. And we need it at times because it's a weird market. So uh, thanks a ton for that. Um, okay, so Scott, back from the aside. Um, you made a really good point on potentially re-engineering processes so that they're functional from a long-term perspective and not just always taking the easiest approach in development. And that seems really obvious from this conversation, but it's actually a fairly common issue in early RPA programs. And from what I've seen, you probably did as well, uh, the result is the appearance of kind of an initial quick win that ends up resulting in a whole lot of long-term maintenance and program strain and can be pretty crippling to a program overall as that starts to build up. Uh, of course, taking the time to pause and assess process design also isn't <laughs> the, always the most comfortable position and it can be even more awkward of a conversation to try and do that if you're wearing the hat of an external vendor, consultant, advisory, trying to come across as easy and amenable to customers consuming your services. Uh, so, brings me around, long way to a, a, a point, um, in a different direction, because you're also pulled into internally delivery resources within Ascension and you've then use those to build out an external RPA implementation and training team. When you transition to start helping external companies develop their practice, where, where were the common challenges that you found across most customers? You know, Josh, there, there are several um, commonalities that we really saw across all, all customers. Um, not, not all of them were in the same place. You know, we each, each one had their own specific place in their own journey. You know, some were, were kind of starting out, um, trying to figure it out. You know, I think we joke in the industry, they're just trying to learn how to spell RPA. You know, some, you know, had it in place. Um, they had uh, tried it out. They've had a couple of successes um, and, and others were, were highly successful. Um, but the commonality uh, was always around, what do you do next? Right, we, we know that we've got the low hanging fruits. We know that you have those easy automations that can be done or, or the things that bring that really quick value. And they, they all kind of had that success or we were able to provide that success. But the one thing that they all struggled with was really trying to understand the true potential between, be, behind what automation can do for you. You know, if, if, 
I think about the analogy that I used several years ago, and it's the Lincoln Logs, you know? Um, you have a box of Lincoln Logs that are sitting there, and you, you, what do you do with them? You spread them out on the floor, and if you don't have that creativity, if you don't have that understanding of what to actually do with those Lincoln Logs, you're not gonna build anything, you know? Um, that's why when you open the box, there's those instructions to build your first one, or even your Legos, you know? You're not gonna build those world-class Lego sets if you don't have an understanding of how they kind of fit together. And I think that's really important as we really look at automation, and as we get our feet wet, and we get ourselves into those, it's really trying to understand, how do I take this to the next step? Because we know that really around RPA, it's really the, the it's not the core, it's a piece of what the true potential can be when we look at the, the full journey of intelligent automation, when you look at what machine learning can do, when you look at what business process can do in orchestration, and you look at the integrations themselves. It really comes up to what is the possibilities that you can do, and it's really limited by the skill sets of the people who can do that for you. So I think that's the commonality, is the understanding of what individuals can really do when they put their mind to it, when they look at those business processes, and you start looking at them end to end, and you say, how do I apply this? in the best, fastest, and the cheapest way uh, to really get full success to what this capabilities can be. <laughs> so, uh, Scott, a couple things. First off, I don't know why I have the iPad twisted the other way, considering you're vertical, but it's funny because uh, when you were talking, I was actually digging through my desk, and ultimately nobody's going to see it because I'll put kind of a video static overlay, but I was digging around my desk for these things. I, I don't know if you checked this, but... I know there is a group of us that spends way too much time together at events over the years because we share go-to analogies, like these offset weird Lego blocks talking about the importance of designing for reuse because these are not fitting together. But uh, funny enough, I, I made these for my webinar with Microsoft on Power Automate a couple months back. So, um, I don't know if you saw that, but anyway, um, <laughs> back on you. Over to the last question, considering your range of experience, what are your lessons learned as someone who built out an internal intelligent automation COE and then also turned around and supported uh, external customers to do the same? Is there kind of a range of experience across the board that you can share with everybody? You know, Josh, some of the key takeaways that I really want uh, your viewers to, to, to really latch on to, to really understand, uh, is how important an IT organization is into the success of your automation program. Not just your IT organization, but the business people themselves. You know, we talked about a little bit earlier and how important the business was, but really having an effective change management program that really ties your business and the IT organizations together. And let's not forget about how important it is to have an executive leadership also bought into the program. You know, over um, the last you know three years of really going out to, to the external market, um, I've seen some really great success stories. Um, early, early, um, our help early into their journey to bring them to success, and others who had had some early success who were kind of stalled out, uh, who were needing a, a jump start and were needing help getting getting it going. Um, but I think one commonality between those um, was really a lack of executive buy-in uh, at an executive level, right? At a strategic um, position of the organization. Not just trying to solve the mundane tasks at a, at a business process level, uh, but really looking end-to-end -end and saying, hey, how are these end-to-end -end processes going to truly impact the business and how the business is impacting their customers uh, and their customers' customers? And how are they bringing, how are they impacting the overall bottom line and the revenues and, and the success of, of the organization? So uh, I, really, I really think that as you're looking, you know, at your own automation program, you should ask yourself, you know, how are you engaging with your, your IT organization? Your IT organization is so important to the success of your, 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 your automation program. Um, but then how are you impacting the business? How are you engaging with the business? How are you staying intact with the business and, and making sure that you're really truly understanding the business process and what it takes to, to truly make that change? Um, you know, there, there's always been the argument between fixing a broken process with automation or fix the automation first before you automate. Uh, you know, it's, it's a never-ending argument, and I can, I can argue both sides of the story. And I think at the end of the day, 
you know, it's what's right for that department. It's right for that business process uh, and understanding how you're going to truly make the most impact at the bottom line. A again, why do we do this? It's not just to automate, just to automate, but it's to truly transform the organization to get to what they really need, which is impacting their customers, impacting their revenue bottom lines. And I think that if you stay focused on that, I think that's when you're going to find true success in your automation program. Thanks, Scott. I I and I completely agree with all of your points. Now, the difference is you just gave me the power to cut anything out if I don't want to agree with it. So um, I it, no, it really, I, I feel like we captured basically an executive summary of at least two dozen of your conference presentations over the years and a lot of the Automation Airways podcasts that you host. So I uh, completely agree. Uh, the top-down executive sponsor to knock down hurdles is a key commonality to every successful automation program that I've seen over the years, independent of the vendor. And um, at the same time, trying to do the whole under the table, under the radar skunk works project around automation where you circumvent, circumvent there we go, I can speak. Uh, circumvent IT is a super quick way to get shut down even if vendor marketing encourages this. I know you've run into that with me. So uh, pause for a second here. <laughs> to wrap things up, if you're not already one of the 10,000 people following Scott, I will post a link to his LinkedIn profile so you can do that. Um, if you're on YouTube, that'll be down below. If you're on LinkedIn, it should be right up above. Scott, uh, as always, thank you for your continued contribution to the intelligent automation community. I, I look forward to doing this again next time. Hopefully we're in person and we just might need to give the disclaimer to the SSON folks that we're not going to overspend the bar tab by 10 grand. And maybe they'll let us back. But uh, again, <laughs> thanks a ton, Scott. And thank all of you. Uh, thank you to all of you across the intelligent automation community that continue to support these efforts. Till next time, see you automation insider community. Mm -hmm.